In 2007, Valve would release Portal, originally for the Orange Box on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and of course on Windows. Portal has since seen ports to other home consoles since that time. However, you've probably never seen anything like this before. This is Portal running on the Nintendo 64, which I might add, released 10 years before Portal even existed, in its full glory. No smoke, no mirrors, original hardware, this is Portal 64. Let's go ahead and take a closer look and see how this impossible port was actually achieved. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. Today's video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. With internet privacy being such a huge deal these days, it's more important now than ever to protect yourself. With Surfshark VPN, you can easily hide your IP address and encrypt all data that you send and receive. You can easily switch regions to other countries in the world. This means not only your true IP address and identity is masked, it also means you can get around any annoying geolocation locked video content. You know the ones that say, this video isn't supported in your country? This can get annoying for me when I want to watch local Aussie news. With Surfshark VPN, I can switch my country to Australia and this problem simply goes away. When I'm researching my videos, because of the nature of my channel, sometimes I need to access older unsecured websites of modding and the underground, and I feel safer knowing that my true IP address is not exposed to these sites. Surfshark VPN also allows you to connect to unlimited devices simultaneously on a single account, and this includes Windows devices, Linux, Android, iOS, Amazon Fire TV, and much more. To get an exclusive Surfshark deal, enter promo code MVG for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals slash MVG. And if you think it sucks, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, which will give you plenty of time to try out Surfshark VPN risk free. Portal 64 is the official name for the DMAG that runs on the N64 and it has been developed by James Lambert. Now James is an experienced programmer who has worked on various N64 projects over the years including a very impressive Mega Texture Tech Demo that was released earlier this year demonstrating its software's Mega Texture technology running on the N64 with just 4 megs of memory I might add. Portal 64, on the other hand, aims to bring the entire game to the N64, and with this latest update 0.13, it's already damn close. There are 12 test chambers that have been developed, there's a fully functional portal gun, the physics engine is completely implemented, there is a lighting system, the menu system has already been implemented, including multi-language subtitle and audio dialogue support. There's cutscenes, there's sound effects, there's also realistic reflections as well. And when you first launch into the game, it truly feels like this is a Valve official game complete with the classic intro and even the menu system that is very familiar to those who play Valve titles. Starting the game has the exact same intro sequence as the original and the speech and you quickly get a sense of how polished this port already is. It runs very smooth, much smoother than you would expect targeting 30 FPS and the Nintendo 64 gamepad is almost ideal for this game with clever use of the analog stick and C buttons to navigate, the R button to grab objects, Z to jump and of course A to fire the portal gun. Everything can be remapped as well if it's not to your liking and overall this port is very smooth and very faithful to the original game and I quite can't believe that Portal is running on the Nintendo 64 without any type of help. Additionally, I do want to talk about the ROM itself. You can build your own ROM assuming that you have access to the original Portal game on Steam. If you don't, it's pretty cheap to buy these days and you can easily construct your own ROM and James leaves instructions on his GitHub page and I'll leave a link in the description below on how to do that. Now of course you can run Portal on original hardware and here it is running on my EverDrive cartridge with the original N64 
but emulation also works as well. I've tried many different N64 emulators and you can run Portal just fine. And of course, for those people that have the Nintendo 64 core and a Mr. FPGA, Portal even runs on the Mr. So you can pretty much run this anywhere you like, it's up to you. But I do definitely recommend that you check this out. So exactly how was this port pulled off? Well, for all that, I recommend that you check out James's awesome YouTube channel, which I will leave a link in the description below, who goes into some very great detail about how Portal 64 came to be. But essentially, what we're talking about here is using the strengths of the Nintendo 64 hardware and minimizing any of the weaknesses to get the game running well. Now the biggest and most obvious question is how the Nintendo 64 is able to pull off the portal effect of looking into another part of the test chamber as seen through the portal. Now James does have a video that goes into some really great detail about this, but the summary here is that James renders the portal view with only the visible parts enabled and with clever use of the Nintendo 64 Z buffer and only by rendering the portal view in the second half of the Z buffer, then he can simply create a hole in the wall and place a transparent overlay on top of it and effectively use the Z buffer to prevent objects behind the wall from rendering over the top of the portal view. Very clever and very effective. And honestly, the effect itself works extremely well. There is some Z fighting that I've noticed in some areas, but overall, this is a very great solution. And you can see here, if we take a look at the wireframe view running on a N64 emulator, you can see exactly what's going on here behind the scenes. You can see the portal view that is being rendered with only the visible geometry made available. Now, this is running via an emulator and the emulation may not be 100% accurate, but you definitely get the idea here. This is a very clever piece of programming. Once again, the Enrichment Center offers its most sincere apologies on the occasion of this unsolvable test environment. When it comes to the original game, lighting is used in a very subtle way. Many of the test chambers have that kind of sterile look about them, but this is done by design. Now, when we talk about lighting, normally a light map would be used. However, in this scenario, a light map just doesn't make sense on the Nintendo 64 because it needs to be sent to the minuscule N64 texture cache. Instead, James uses vertex lighting to set specific RGB values for each vertex. This, according to James, is almost free performance because the vertex formats the N64 supports also supports color values. So effectively, James sends pre-computed color vertex values and this provides a very good lighting and shadowing for each of the test chambers that match up pretty well to the original. Now, according to James, originally he felt like the biggest bottleneck may have been the physics system. Of course, a game like Portal relies heavily on the use of physics for the gameplay itself. However, after profiling the game, the renderer ended up being the biggest bottleneck. When the scene is rendered, it's important to only send the visible objects to the GPU, especially on the Nintendo 64. Once again, due to its minuscule texture cache, and its high memory latency. However, James originally used up too much CPU processing determining which objects should be sent to the GPU and which should be not. His original approach was to loop through every single object individually in the scene and flag them to be visible or not. Now, this approach was refined to use a bounding volume hierarchy by grouping objects together as individual bounding boxes and then grouping those boxes as a hierarchy. And with this, it's much simpler to determine visibility and requires much less CPU. Now this would give a massive performance increase, especially in test chambers with more geometry later on in the game. James also implemented anamorphic widescreen as well as interlaced and non-interlaced screen modes. He also mentioned that compiler optimizations weren't turned on until later on in the project. So he wasn't really quite sure what level of performance could be achieved with enabling the compiler optimizations. And he did mention that the compiler optimizations did offer some significant performance increases. And finally, even in the last update, added rumble pack support, which is a really cool feature. So there you have it. That is Portal 64 on the Nintendo 64. What an amazing port this is. I think out of all the kind of recent impossible ports I've looked at, including Tomb Raider on the GBA, 
Portal 64 is definitely up there as one of the most technically impressive ones that I've seen. I want to give a huge thanks to James for working on this port and I'll leave various links to his channel and his GitHub page in the description below. If you do want to build your own Portal 64 Nintendo 64 ROM, you can do it very, very easily, assuming you have an original copy of Portal, which is something that you can pick up on Steam very, very cheap these days. There's really no reason why you could do that. And of course, you can run the ROM on various N64 emulators, original hardware, and the Mr. FPGA. All these scenarios work fine with this game. We're going to leave it here for today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Download and check out Portal 64. Let me know your thoughts below in the comments, and I will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.